Hello everyone. If you have worked with the AI application, you know that integrating AI application with the other services, for example, pulling data from the Google Drive or accessing the Azure resources, it usually means that dealing with the APIs. So in that case, you have to write code where you have to handle the output, pass the data as well as do the filtering. But here's the catch. If the API changes, maybe a new version is released or certain features are updated. In that case, your existing code might break. And then you have to go back and fix your own code and always keep a track of the new version or the new changes which are done in the API. And if your AI application is using multiple tools, in that case, you have to keep a track of a lot of application which becomes an overhead. Now AI applications are becoming more and more essential. So integrating them with the different tools is kind of a necessity now. But until now, there wasn't a standard way to handle these integration. And that's where the MCP, which is Model Context Protocol, comes in. Now, MCP was introduced by Anthropic, but now is being adapted by all the major AI providers, as well as the different applications. It can be networking devices, as well as the different cloud providers. So it works just like USB-C port, which works universally across the different devices. So MCP creates a standard for AI application where all the features are clearly defined as well as how the output will look like. So if you have used the MCP server for the integration of any specific tool, in that case, your output will always be the same. In case there are changes in the API that will be managed by the developer or the handler of the application itself. So now the organization of the vendors who are creating the application are managing their own MCP server. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up and use the Azure MCP server with Python. So I'll show you how you can run it locally or deploy it somewhere so that you can use it as a URL. So let's get started and do the step-by-step -step deployment in the lab. So if you look at the documentation, then Azure MCP server is in preview right now, as you can see here. And the documentation is very clearly defined. Now, there are two things which are required. First one is the Python. Of course, we are running in Python, so you require Python. And the Node.js. Node.js is Node.js is specifically for running the MCP server. So it should be installed locally. So if I'll show you the code. So it's using Azure Identity so that you don't have to provide the API keys and it'll get the token. Then we are using Azure OpenAI because for the tool calling, we are using the functional calling of Azure OpenAI. So Azure OpenAI model will be used. And then the MCP client sessions and the connectivity and rest are the passing as well as filtering of the data. And dot environment is for environment variables. So the endpoint and the model is defined, then getting the token for it and making an OpenAI connection. Azure MCP latest, it will start the MCP server locally. So that means now this will be part of your code. So when you are running this, automatically this will connect to the latest MCP connectivity and it will depend on your credentials. Like if you have access to your Azure environment, it will provide details of the Azure environment. There is another way which you can use. You can use the app registration. There you can use the client secret and that will work too. And then you define the different tools which are available and you start the conversation. And it will work like a chat where the different tools will be called, which I'll show you later. So this is how it works here. But I want to show the same functionality little differently. Now this, now the MCP server defined here is local. But think about a scenario. If you have an MCP server for your organization, but they want to standardize it. They want to set it up separately so that all the different applications can connect to a single server and get the desired output. So that they don't have to run MCP server for each and every application, AI application which is running. And for that, I have already created the code. Now these are the different packages which needs to be installed. And if we'll go to the MCP server, so what it's doing is, it's using the sub process, asset util, as well as system. And then it's just running the NPX. So if you're running it locally, you should have Node.js installed. If you're running in app services, then the environment should be 
Node.js environment. Then you run the MCP server using the SSC transport. This is important to be defined here with the port 5008. I have defined specifically, you can change any port. If we'll run this code, this will run the MCP server. So now the MCP server has to be connected. So it will be connected through the client. But I have another code defined for the connector, which defines how the connectivity will work. And then you will have the different clients where you will have the filtering as well as passing of the data, which you can change based on your requirement. So here it's the same thing which was defined in the Microsoft provided code, MCP client, Azure identity, everything. So it's getting all the details for Azure OpenAI models. However, the server URL, this is MCP server URL is 5008 localhost. But if we'll deploy in the app services or somewhere else, then it will be public endpoint URL. Now for the connector, you have to define different client sessions or the streams using the SSE transport. So all this is defined here, how the connectivity will happen using the URL. And then the different tools which will be called because Azure MCP server supports multiple tool calling. And I'll show you after this. And then how to stop this. And this is the MCP connector. And the third one is the MCP client, you can call it as. So it's using the MCP connector itself because all the details are defined in the MCP connector. But here we are providing more details like the subscription ID and why we are providing this. I'll show you quickly. If we'll go back to Microsoft website and you'll click on the tools. So there are different tools which are available. You can, you can use the Azure AI search. You can use the subscription resource group as your storage. So if we'll click on subscription, you can only list the subscriptions which are available. Show me all the subscriptions I have list in the different region. And if we'll talk about the resource group, it can list the different resource group and their regions and everything. Now there is one parameter which is defined in all these tools. Here the required parameter is subscription. But similarly, if you'll go to the Azure storage account, if you need the, if you need to list the storage accounts, you just need subscription. But if you need to list the containers, then you need the subscription as well as the storage account. Same with the blobs. You need subscription, storage account and container name. So all these details you have to provide while doing the chat with your application. So MCP client should have all these details before calling that tool. And that's what is defined in my code. So I have just hard coded the subscription ID and there are few tools like list the subscription, list the resource groups, storage accounts, Cosmos DB accounts or the search services. All these tools can be called with just the subscription. You don't need extra information like the storage account name or any specific resource name because we are just listing the storage account, not the containers or not the blog. And there are different tool mapping which is defined. So using the MCP, these tools will be called and then the connectivity, OpenAI client connectivity. So this is the filtering and passing how the output will look like to you. So this is important and because in the case of the API, if the API changes, these things also tend to change. But in the case of MCP now, these things will remain same. So all the changes in the API will be maintained by the MCP server itself. Let me quickly show you how the MCP server code is. So this is Azure MCP server, which is defined and this is maintained by Microsoft itself. So you can go here and check how the different tools and everything is defined. You can, you can even customize it. You can download it, customize it, run it as your own. And if you want to add more resources, you can do that. But however, we are going with the latest version of the MC, Azure MCP server and we'll use it directly. Here it's defined then the chat loop so that I can ask question to the chat. So first thing first, I'll open the terminal. Create a virtual environment. It's already created. So I'll just activate it. And after that, you have to install all the requirements of TXT. I have already done it. So what I'll do is I'll just run 
एम सी पी सर्व सो आल रन द एम सी पी सर्व सो दिस इज द कमांड इट विल स्टार्ट एंड रन द एम सी पी सर्व सून एंड परफेक्ट एम सी पी सर्वर इज रनिंग ऑन पोर्ट फाइव जीरो जीरो एट लोकली then comes the connector which is already defined but we'll use the client directly so let's use another tab and activate the virtual environment now let's run list client i've named it as list client because we are just listing the resources using the subscription id perfect so as your subscription scope tools chat so let's write list me the resource groups in my subscription oh i got a failure and the reason is because i haven't logged into my account because we are not using any app registrations so it completely depends on my credentials so let me quickly log in all good and let's try again so i am logged into my subscription and let's try to run this again list all the resource groups in my subscription and perfect as you can see the assistant has replied that there are these are the resource group in your subscription and it's providing the resource group name as well as the location and it completely depends on you how you want your output to be the output was never this pretty because we have done some formatting and filtering that's why the output is looking like this otherwise it gives a json output now that output is predefined and every time you connect an ai application with the mcp server it gets a standard json output this is the reason why standardization is important and which makes mcp server really important let's ask something else to list storage accounts in my subscription i think i only have one storage account and perfect it got that storage account and that's how you can keep asking questions but if it's out of scope of course it will fail otherwise llm will do the function calling where the tool will be called and it will provide the required output right now the mcp server is running locally if you deploy in app services or somewhere in a in a different server then all the ai applications can connect to that mcp server and get the azure resources from there so that's all i wanted to show in this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much